welcome to the part 14 of this video series. We will cover all real questions. Please hit the subscribe button. A lot of effort goes into preparing these contents. The goal is to be as accurate as possible. Remember, there are two playlists. This is the one and there is an old playlist as well on this channel those questions are still relevant let's jump into the questions so this one is an hybrid application so we got on-prem and aws since this is hybrid and direct link is used to connect you want this connection to be durable what should we use so well first one says that we use both that dx as well as vpn you know what VPN is not durable if I get an option to put 2DX that would be durable VPN not durable B looks correct it's as good as I have 1DX as primary and the other DX, if the first one fails, I can use the second one, which is also a DX, which is durable. So this looks correct. C tells you to use a very reliable DX partner, maybe Cisco or Geo. Reliable partners do not guarantee durability that is you get married and your partner promises for two foreign trips per year but he defaults it can happen people can go ahead for divorce nobody owns anyone anything similarly if you have a reliable DX partner, they can still falter. So this is wrong because they are still humans. What D says is they still got just one DX connection. That is this one. And on this, they want to build virtual interfaces. But my problem is if this goes down, then there is no durability so D is wrong here goes the final answer so there is a financial institution okay just like Bank of America and what are they most worried about is security they do not want unsecured systems so they have an application which fetches the stock price using APIs but sometimes they see an upsurge upsurge means in one go say a million API queries now the security team is worried about HTTP flood attacks and the question says out of these options what will you use to build a defense system as usual you do not want to spend efforts so it should come with least amount of operational overhead cloud front is used for Netflix kind of application 
for OTT platforms, primarily to cache the contents, not good to stop flood attacks. This is wrong. WAF looks correct because its purpose is to protect your web applications from common web exploits. So what happens when an attack happens? Your availability of the applications is impacted. You end up compromising security of the applications. That is the data like social security numbers and any PII data is not safe. Any data is not safe. And you end up co consuming excessive resources. With WAF, you can control how the traffic reaches your applications. Okay, it adds a set of security rules that controls bot traffic. You know how do such attacks happen? It happens through bots. Okay. And another important attack that happens is through SQL injections, or we also call it cross-site scripting. Hence, B is correct. C is wrong because it is a reactive solution and not a proactive solution because it is similar to telling a security guard, hey, thieves have entered the complex, but it does not actually prevent the thief from entering your apartment complex. D is wrong as well. It is always asking you to go through cloud front distribution and mostly for such web applications where the reads can be less than the write. a typical web application, which is only trying to get the latest data. Caching won't help you much. Plus, this use case does not require a solution for caching. It requires a solution for security. This is the final answer. So you are worried about the security of your EC2 instances. As an organization, you want to show that you follow the security compliance requirements. What can you do out of these four to achieve this goal? The moment I see may see Okay, this is a solution for S3. You cut your documents on S3 environments, okay? And you have just completed your document migration. You are not sure if any of those documents have sensitive data like credit cards, social security numbers, or any data which is marked as PII. Macy is kind of an AI-based system which scans the documents and discovers and tells you, hey, you know, out of the 100 PDF files, 10 of these have PII, that is personal identifiable data sets. Macy is not as EC2 solution. It is an S3 solution, okay? That's why this is wrong. B talks about guard duty is an intelligent threat detection service. So what it does is a thief comes to your apartment complex and the thief goes to building A, building B, 
wing C, wing D. So God Judy will tell you there was an interception and or sorry, there was an intrusion and the intruder went to wings A, B, C and D. These were the footmarks. But it will not help you to stop the thief from entering your complex. Guard duty is a post-mortem solution. It will not work. What is the use of alerting residents through SNS alerts and tell them, hey, you know what, a thief came and they took away your cash. C talks about inspector. This looks correct because inspector, it does a continuous vulnerability management at scale. So it would immediately discover and scan systems for vulnerabilities. Inspector, as the name suggests, it's just like a police inspector who will not allow the thief to get inside your complex. These reports, which like, these are highly accurate inspector risk score, you can use this to prove that your system is compliant. This is my answer. Event bridge is used to build event driven applications at scale. Okay, you can also be create SAS apps, which is like software as a service. This is wrong because we don't want to use event bridge and create applications. This is the right answer. This question is an encryption question. So with minimum number of infrastructure, what option can you use to encrypt the database at rest? The first one will work with encryption in transit, but not with rest. B is not an easy thing to do because it uses hardware based encryption keys and then it also uses CMKs. So there are two types of keys for one problem. Not good. All A, B, and C, they just talk about database volumes encryption, database volumes encryption, database volumes encryption. We got to do the instance and the volume encryption here because you got EC2 on which the application resides and then the backup is done using RDAs. So if you have EC2, you also have EBS there. You got to encrypt that EBS volumes. That is the block store. That is precisely DDoS. It configures EBS encryption and RDS encryption. It uses both. And then it is just using KMS service to encrypt both the instance and the database volumes. Because remember, the backup is in RDS and your database now is in two places on EC2 and RDS. RDS has the backup. So you got to encrypt both. So this is my final answer. So in a nutshell, this question says there is a performance issue when we try to read the database. So you see this time out issue. We need an automated solution that means no manpower 
will be available to fix this issue when it happens. We need to select two options, two answers. When I just whiz through the options, I see Aurora, and that should be the answer. Because if you see E, it recommends to use RDS, which is a multi-AZ deployment. So when do we do a multi-AZ deployment? We do it when we need a disaster recovery solution. But in this use case, we need a scalable solution. So what we should do is, ACES migrate the database to Aurora serverless, which is an on-demand uh, auto-scaling configuration. So it automatically starts up, shuts down, and scales capacity both the ways, either up or down, based on the application needs. So what is beautiful is you do not need to manage the database capacity and you got to pay on a per second basis whenever the database is active. So if it is inactive, you do not pay for it. So this is my first answer. B says we should increase the instance size of Aurora database. It is not needed. We saw in the documentation that Aurora serverless does that automatically. Option C looks correct because what it does is it creates Aurora replicas. And what is the use of replicas here is it is read only. So when we try to read from the database during peak hours, that traffic will be sent to your replicas. So this looks correct. D says you got to migrate the database to a multi-master cluster. If you do a multi-master, it is a write solution. It is not a read solution. In multi-master, the writes is done across multiple clusters. We need to solve the read problem. There is no write problem, so we cross this. I already explained option E is a disaster recovery solution, not a solution to enhance your read performance. This is the final answer. Please subscribe to this channel. It takes a lot of effort to analyze each and every option. All attempts are made to make the answer as accurate as possible. This brings us to the end of this video. Let us whiz through the questions in summary. There is an old playlist. The questions are still relevant. See you in the next part.